at any rate, you're going to have to have the includes. You know why, right? Because the includes are the pieces of HTML that you're going to tear apart from all the other pages. And they're going to be common among all the pages. So you want them all included. They are common to all the pages, therefore you want to be able to include them. So you just put them in the, the includes. Those are the footer, the header, the menus, and the sidebars. And there's going to be several sidebars. As we convert more HTMLs into PHPs, you're going to see that there's more than one sidebar. See the registration HTML. So what did I do? I took all the HTML pages, images, JavaScript folders, styles, everything, and copied them straightforward to Timex PHP. Then I renamed the one registration HTML, I renamed it to registration.php. I added in my SQL iConnect, which is something that I'm going to be using to connect to the database on all functional requirements. I also included a, a backup of my Timex database. And then finally, I created the includes folder and put all the common stuff in it. Okay. All right, let me see if I understand your question. Your question is, I worked out of the HTML version and I did not create a new project. Am I rephrasing your question correctly? There's a problem with that. And as you can see, the Timex HTML is a JavaScript project, while Timex PHP is a PHP project. Eclipse is going to treat them differently. You are not going to be able to debug a JavaScript project but you are going to be able to debug a PHP project. You're not going to be able to run a Timex HTML project within Eclipse under the HTTP server, but you will be able to run a PHP project within Eclipse in the HTTP server. So my suggestion is do exactly as I did in my, pro in my video lecture. I had my Timex HTML, I right click on the PHP Explorer and created a brand new PHP project. That's what I did. And I copy all the HTMLs into that project. And then little by little I started converting them. Are there any other questions? Okay, so last Friday I said I was going to cover what? Login? Logging and timesheet list. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to very broadly compare what exactly you guys need to change from the existing project that you guys are turning in Sunday, which should only contain the what registration. <coughs> What do you have to change in order to bump it up to the next level, which is logging, providing logging, providing timesheet list, and I'm going to do I'm going to do forgot my password also. It's another functionality that I'm doing. <coughs> So, these are the changes. <coughs> okay, so first thing is your sign in dot HTML. Guess what? talk to you about it live. This is my sign in HTML. 
I'm going to have to convert it to PHP. Logging. Remember how we did registration? PHP? It was a form that it will post onto itself. We're going to do something similar with the login. Okay? So we're going to have to convert our signing.html into signing PHP. Also, timesheet list. This is timesheet list, the HTML. Well, guess what? With timesheet list, I must be logged in in order to see my timesheets. Right? So Mike Dover has to be logged in in order to be able to see these. So we're going to see how to control that. And he can only see his timesheets, nobody else's. Okay? So that's one thing that we have to control. First, whether it's logging or not. Second, only show the pertinent information for that user and only for that user. Okay? We're going to see if there's any differences in the database, which probably there is. One of which is saving the the password in an encrypted form. Okay? And we're going to have to add the forgot password PHP, which is it's a, it's a separate um, PHP page of its own. We never had uh, an HTML equivalent of it. If you cannot remember your password, please click here. So we never had any forgot password HTML in there. Okay. Okay. So, any questions of what we're going to be doing? All right, so let's start with the sign in. Okay? So I take the sign in HTML and I do the same conversion that I did to the all the other ones. What's the conversion that we did to all the other ones? We're going to do uh an include of the header, right? And include of the menus and include of the footer, right? I'm going to have my own sign-in sidebar. Why? Because look at this sidebar for home. I'm sorry, for registration. See this sidebar for registration? It's different than the sidebar for login. So I'm going to have a login sidebar, uh, a sidebar for signing. It's a different one. So I'm going to have to do an include of that one too. Then I'm going to have to keep the same form. Same form. Which form? This form. This is a form, right? Login should be a form. Where is the form? Here it is. Okay. Now, in my signing HTML, my form is posting to timesheet list because that's where I'm supposed to go after successfully logging. Obviously, in my HTML, I never log in truly, right? So the click to login takes me to timesheet list. But now we have to change that. Why? Because now we truly have to val to authenticate this user. So, where is it going to post to? Itself. It's going to post to itself. Okay? Now let's get familiar with our input tags. Our input tags are username. Where are you?
Yeah, it's a username, right? And password. And what else? Submit it. What's the value for for username? In my case, it's the employee ID, right? That will be the value. What's the value for my password? Some encrypted. It's not really encrypted, but it's not showing clear text, right? Letters and digits and whatnot. And then, what's the value for submit it? Sign in. Got it? Those are the three values that will get posted onto itself. So what are we going to do? As soon as we enter our page content, and all the pages will be the same. The code will be right after div page, div content. Okay. What are we going to do? What on earth is this? Yes, it's a PHP global called session. And it's asking for a value of a variable called employee ID. And it's asking whether it's been set or not. So let's investigate a little bit deeper what exactly is that dollar sign underscore session it's an associative array so you guys know it's already an array right an array of hashes name value name value containing session variables available to the current page so whenever you want PHP to remember something for you between one page and the next and the next page you store it in the session because that's going to be the only array that the server and the client our Apache web server and our Firefox browser will exchange continuously on every page as long as you're logged in and this is very important as long as you're logged in so what do you think is going to happen the very first time when you ask whether this thing is set or not and you're not logged in you can say mm. I have no idea what you're talking about there's no such thing called employee ID under the session in fact the session is empty so, in that case, what happens? You jump all that stuff. Oh, actually, it's just this. <laughs> you jump this, and you go into the else. And the else asks for what? So, at this point, you know you're not logged in. So much you know. And then you say, okay, let me ask and see if maybe somebody tried to log in. How do you know that? Because you're going to ask if submitted is in the post. Who is submitted? The button. So you're going to ask whether submitted is in the post. Guess what? The first time, no. You're just hitting sign in. You're not posting anything. So you're going to skip the whole if and you're going to present to me just an empty form. So I'm going to type in there one, two, three, whatever, whatever, whatever. My password one, two, three, four, five. Hit submit. And then here it comes again. It's going to post unto itself. And it's going to say, hey, is somebody in the session called employee ID set? Mm -mm. I have no idea what we're talking about. Okay. Let's go into the else. Is something called submitted being posted? Yes, it is. All right. Let's connect to the database. Let's prepare our array of errors. 
let's make sure that the username is not empty L otherwise if it's not empty I'm sorry if it's empty you're gonna set you forgot you enter your username that's server-side validation correct if it's being set you're gonna escape it make sure it's some valid value not some kind of SQL injection then you're going to do the same thing with the password. You're going to say, "It's is it being, is it empty? Is something posted called password empty? If it's not, then you are going to, oh, look at this. We're combining the not empty. This in here, we, there our condition was, if it's empty, then do this. The condition here is, if it's not empty, then do that. You can do either one. That's fine. So you're going to escape it right and you're going to save the password in dollar p the username in dollar un okay and if there are no errors that means you know everything went okay we got a username and a password what are we going to do we're going to go to the database we're going to create this query okay and this query Let me start my SQL Query Browser, which I like much better than the my PHP Admin. And this is the query that I'm going to be executing. Select ID, employee ID, name, email, employee type, manager from employee. Okay. And I'm going to make sure that it's Timex by default. Okay? So it's my Timex. Where employee ID equals, and notice that I have employee ID between single quotes. Why? Yes, exactly. Because if you go into employee, table, you're going to see that the employee ID is a var char of 11. Okay? That means I'm going to be storing 123 dash 45 dash 6, 7, 8, 9. That's 11. It's a social security number. It's 3 dash 2 dash 4. Okay? So I need 11 characters to save the employee ID. And it is a string. That's why in the query, you got to set it up in such a way that you make sure that you put those single quotes. If you don't put the single quotes, it's not going to take it. It's not going to execute the query correctly. So let's find out somebody's social security number here mine right I'm gonna copy the field content and I'm gonna set it up in here oops ah there you go so I'm selecting all that stuff from employee where employee ID equals that. And the password equals what? The SHA-1 of what this guy just showed me or posted to me, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay? So, dollar sign $P is the clear text password. You SHA it, which is going to give you the 255 character encrypted equivalent, and you're going to compare that to the password field in the database. You execute this. Here it is. I found the user. In fact, there's a problem with this. I should only find one user, <laughs> right? Remember we talked about this in registration? I should only allow one person with that employer ID registering. 
Well, I don't have that constraint yet, implemented yet. That's why you see all these. But in reality, you should see only one user coming up in the results. Okay? So that's the query that you built. And then you tell PHP to execute it. This is the query. This is the database connection. And you're going to get back R. Wait a minute. This R is different from the R that we got back in registration. What were we doing in registration? An insert. Insert blah, 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 into... And then the R that will come back will be either true or false. I did it or I couldn't do it. True or false. In this case, we're not doing an insert. We're doing a select. Select means I'm asking for a whole bunch of information. So R is no longer going to be a true or false value. It's going to be actually number uh, a whole bunch of rows. A whole bunch of rows. All these. Because you never know in your select <coughs> how many results you're going to have. Excuse me. So... You ask whether the, the number of, res in MySQL I, number of rows is a function. And you pass the result set and it will tell you whether it's equal to 1, 2, whatever, whatever. If it's equal to 1, then you have found a match. Which in this case, you will not. You found 4. That's not good, right? So let me do this. Let me get rid of myself from the database. Delete rows, apply changes, and now we're going to run it again. How many do we get now? One. Okay? I just got rid of Alvaro Escobar four registrations from last week. Now I should say, okay, the number of rows is equal to 1. That means you found me. So now you have authenticated this person. This person has given you a username and it has given you a password that matches what you have in the database. So you know who he is or she is. So what are you going to do? You're going to tell MySQL to fetch the array of results. And the array could be one result or many results. In this case, we know it should only be one. Okay? And so we're going to tell it to do MySQL fetch the results as an array. And this is another cool function and really cool function in PHP because <coughs> fetch array you can actually tell it to fetch the array in several types of formats in this case we're asking to fetch the array as a MySQL association okay but you can also do it as... I'm trying to look at the different values. Here they are. MySQL association or MySQL numeration or MySQL both. Association and numeration. Okay? And that's that's pretty much what it means. It's, it's, it determines how you're going to access the values in that array. So when you declare um, you want your array as a MySQL association, what that means is you're going to have your name of the field and the value. Name of the field and the value. Right? So now, what are you doing? You're actually saving in the session. You're saving in the dollar sign underscore session the entire result. 
the entire result that means you are saving this whole record you're saving the ID the employee ID the name the email the employee type and the manager ID of the person who just logged in okay all those will be available in the session from here on until the user logs out okay yes you can put keep pushing stuff you can keep putting stuff in the session and then when you're done with it you're just gonna push nothing which will erase it empty and we're gonna see how that's done in the logout which by the way if you implement login you also have to implement logout <laughs> otherwise you will never be able to get out of that session okay and then you call you guys are starting to get the hang of this this is just a bunch of functions it's just a calling ph php uh, code is just calling a whole bunch of functions so what is my sql result free free is the memory associated with a result so the memory that this thing was take holding where is it? The memory that this result was holding, it's being freed. Okay? And you're just closing the connection. Now, why do you want to free that? Exactly, because you already stored it in the session. You don't want any other piece of code to have access to that, except through the session. Okay? And then, now that you have truly authenticated somebody, you found that this person gave you the right username and gave you the right user password, the correct password, and now his information or his or her information is in the session, what's the next step that you're going to do? Well, according to our static HTML when you sign in successfully you should be taken to timesheet list right I mean I don't want you to take me back to log in why because it's going to be confusing you're going to be like am I logged in or I'm not especially if you don't have any greeting like hello Alvaro and you're welcome back or whatever you know, you can't send me back to the login. It will totally confuse the user. So you should send him or her to the timesheet list. And this is exactly what we're doing here. We're providing a URL variable with timesheet list. Now this base URL, this base URL is being created up here in the includes. I have added a configuration include and I want to I want to show you guys what that configuration includes is all about. These are just my global functions specific to Timex. Okay? So very similar to my SQL connect, remember the my SQL connect? In my SQL Connect, I had these constants like da database user, database password, who is the database host, what's the da database name, all that stuff. Well, in configuration include, I'm going to have configuration variables, or I should say constants. For instance, whether the, um, the site right now is being live or not, that's going to make a difference, and we're going to see that later on why. Also, who is the admin to contact in case something is wrong with the date with the website? Also, what's going to be the base URL? The base URL includes the the protocol, which is HTTP. Notice that it's not 8080; it's 80 by default. 
So that's why we do, we do not include the uh, the um, the port number. Okay. This is the name of the web server, localhost, and this is the name of the project or the system that we're building. Yes. So the base URL is going to be how am I going to find my website on the internet? And when you move this into a real production server, obviously that's going to change. You might change it to a different port and that all you have to do is change it here and everybody else will fall through. You might have your own domain name and instead of localhost you're going to have a www.mydomainname.com or whatever and you change it here and everybody else falls through. You might want to change the name of your project to timesheets, timesheet system, whatever. Something that doesn't include the PHP. You, nobody has to know that it's being created in PHP. Right? So you might want to change the name of that project and you can change it here and everybody else falls through. So now you're, st you're starting to understand, right? It's, it's a configuration that you want to be able to do it in one and only one place. Also, the MySQL, the location of the MySQL connection is going to be found under the parent.mysql connect, which we already have here, MySQL I connect. Okay? What else? The uh, time zone, U.S. Eastern, sometimes that's going to be relevant depending on where your deployment server is being sent. Okay, and we're not going to go in through my error handler yet. So th those are the f global uh, variables, also called constants, that I'm going to be needing. So, so after authenticating the user, I'm going to construct a URL made out of the base URL, the constant, plus timesheet list. So I'm going to send this person that just authenticated successfully into timesheet list. And then at this point, you do an OBN clean. What is that? That's basically ch wiping out everything that is in the buffer. So if you generated any contact whatsoever, this function discards the contact of the topmost outer output buffer and turns off this output buffering. So what that means is whatever content you have generated up to this point, tell me, have you generated any content up to, up to this point? Yes, you have. Yes, you have. This is content. This is content. So all the content that you have generated up to this point, guess what's going to happen? <whistles> Wiped out. Why? Why do you want to do that? Why do you want to do that? Take a wild guess. Why? Because I'm sending the user to a different page. So all that stuff that is being accumulated in the buffer, I don't want to send it to the user. What happens if you don't wipe it off? It will give you two headers, it will give you two menus, and it's going to be a mess. So you want to wipe out whatever is in the buffer so far because you're about to send me to a different URL. And how do you send me to a different URL? You tell the header, go to this location. This is almost like clicking on a link and remember, in the header, it tells you who is it from, who is it coming from, and where is it going to. In the header, all that stuff, it's in the header. So in here, you're modifying the header to say, I want you to take me to this location. And then, you exit. 
end of that end of that script. So basically, <coughs> basically, login becomes input this stuff, input this stuff, click on sign in, validated. If everything is successful, take me to timesheet list. What if it's not successful? What if there were errors? Either username or password were not good or they were empty somehow. What happens? You're going to report those errors. Where are you going to report those errors? In the same page. Right there. In the same page. You're going to say, password is should not be blank or whatever. What is the validation for password? You forgot to enter your password. That should show up right here in the else. If there is any errors, you're going to navigate in a for each loop through all the errors and you're going to put them in red, remember? You're going to put them in red with a breakpoint. So you're going to show me all the errors. Please try again. And that stuff is going to show up in the same page. Notice that you should not wipe the buffer when there's errors, obviously. Now, suppose that there's no errors, but this person did not put the right combination of username and password. What do you think is going to come back here as the number of rows? Eh. Zero. What does that mean? Sorry, man, but either your username or your password do not agree with what I have in the database. And you're not going to report who is who is missing or who is in, or who is the incorrect one, because that may lead to security breaches. Okay. So at this point, all you know is that either the username or the password were not found in the database. So what are you going to do? You're going to go into the else. No match was made. And you're going to report it in a class error. That's probably red. A paragraph class error would probably show up in big letters and red. It's either the username and password do not match those on file, or you have not registered yet. That's also a possibility. Maybe the person believes that he or she has registered and in reality hasn't. Please register. And you click here and you provide the registration link. Please register here or try login again. That's it. That's the feedback. But if there is a successful authentication, you're going to take me to this new page timesheetlist.php so now we're ready now we're ready to see how our content will vary depending on who is logged in and we're gonna see that in timesheet list so you guys ready for timesheet list let's go into timesheet list what is timesheet list let's get familiar with timesheet list for a second going back to the HTML Okay, so timesheet list is a list of timesheets by period ending day, the number of hours from the timesheet, the department that it was charged, the status of that timesheet, and the ID. Okay, and I'm going to provide that information in a table, probably sorted by date. I'm thinking it might make sense the one on the top, the most recent, and all the way back. Right? Kinda. And guess what? It's going to be only for this employee. Now, the cool thing is, we already know who this guy is. Because we have him in the session. 
okay so we're going to have to take this whole HTML page and do the exact same thing that we did to the other two, registration and login. That means we're going to have to do the include, uh, the, I'm sorry, the require ones of the configuration PHP. We're going to do the include of the header. We're going to do the include of the menus. You know, get rid of all that stuff. But look at this. This is pretty cool. The first thing that you're going to do when you hit this page is you're going to say, wait a minute, stop right there. Tell me something. Is the session set? If the session is not set, that means nobody's logged in. And if nobody's logged in, you have nothing to do in this page. Nothing. It's none of your business. So what am I going to do? I'm going to tell it to do a session start. This. <laughs> session start, basically what it's going to do is going to say, hey, I want you to start a new session. On the web server, I want you to start a new session. N session. Now, it's going to be an empty session, right? Because nobody's going to be in there. So what is session start? <coughs> And that's the first thing that we're going to do when we find out that there's no session. Okay? You start a new session or resume an existing session. So basically what you're going to say is, okay, if I don't have a session right now in this page, because it's not set, I want to call session start. And session start is going to ask, hey, um, web server do you know if this guy is has a session or not if it doesn't have a session then start a new one but if it does have a session please store whatever is in the session in the dollar sign underscore session variable okay and the web server will know that because it's going to base it on the IP address and all that stuff that previously happened in the login. Okay? Communicated between the client and the server. And so if the user has logged in, now we have under dollar sign underscore session his or her information. If he has never logged in, then it's, we have a dollar sign underscore session but it's empty and that's the result of the session start then we're going to do the required ones the we're going to include the header the menus and then what's the first thing that we're going to ask whether employee ID is in the session so guess what if the user has never logged in employee ID will never be in the session because it's a brand new session and if that's the case what are we going to do we're going to go into the else and what's the else can you guys tell me can you figure it out yeah exactly you're going to say hey you have nothing to do here buddy go back to sign in how are you going to do that you're going to prepare a URL Ba made out of the base URL and the sign in PHP. Then you're going to clean everything that is in the buffer. So you're going to clean the whatever header, whatever menu that you built so far. And then you're going to tell the header, hey, send this person to the sign in page. Exit. So you're going to see immediately, as soon as you hit, as soon as you hit, and maybe you have saved this, as soon as you hit, Timex. Sheet time sheet list at PHP, and you're not logged in. You immediately get sent to login. It's like, whoa! Wait a minute, what happened? I thought I was trying to go to time sheet list. Well, guess what? You're not logged in, so it will not take you to time sheet list. Okay, but suppose you are logged in. That means that employee ID is in the session. How do you know that employee ID is in the session? Let me see sign in. Oh, because that was one of the fields that I asked in the query when he or she authenticated. Now, you could have asked for any one of them. 
Instead of employee ID, you could have asked for maybe email, or the name, or the ID. That's fine. I decided to look for employee ID. All right, but you can use any one of the fields in the session. Okay. So if that guy is set, that means we do have somebody authenticated. And we're going to figure out the timesheets for this guy and only this guy. So we're going to connect to the database. We're going to say from the session the ID. Can you tell me what ID is this? This ID, and this is something that you will see, it's a, my standard and in, in the industry, usually it's the regular standard. Every table, every table, the primary key, okay, of the records will be ID. And this ID is different than this employee ID. Actually, th I should have called this username. Really, because this is not really the employer ID, it's the username, which typically is an ID. Like in NSU, you're given an N number, right? That's your um, student ID. But that's, that's different from the primary key. The primary key identifies you uniquely in the table. And that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'm getting from the session the primary key of that employee. Why? Because in timesheets there is a foreign key. This is the foreign key. It's called employee ID. Okay? And this foreign key should have the same value as the primary key from the employee that belongs to this timesheet. And that's why I'm going to construct a select query. Okay? And I'm going to be selecting the ID from the timesheet and the status code from the timesheet and the period ending date from the timesheet and all this stuff. I'm going to also be selecting the name. from the department. Okay? What else am I selecting? Whoa! Look at this! I'm selecting a field called total. And this total is a calculation of the sum of all these fields divided by 60. What are these fields? minutes Monday, minutes Tuesday, minutes Wednesday. These are the minutes that are being saved in the timesheet. So I'm going to add them all up, divide them by 60, and I'm going to call it total. This is Structure Query Language 101. And I know some of you guys might be a little bit, and if you need any help with these Structure Query Language, let me know. You say, hey, Professor, I have no idea what kind of query I need. I, what I need to do is grab this, that, this, and the other, and I don't know how to... No problem. I can help you with that, because this course is not about database management systems. But you're going to need to know a few queries, or build a few queries so you get the right information. From what tables am I grabbing? From the timesheet, which I call it T. So all the fields that are prefixed by T dot means that those fields come from the timesheet table. Also from the department, which I call D. So all the fields that are prefixed with a D dot come from that table. Okay? And what's the condition? I mean, I'm not going to grab absolutely all the timesheets, right? What's the condition? The condition is that the employer ID in timesheet must be equal to that ID. What ID is that? Well, the one that is in the session. So I only grab that guy's timesheets. 
because the employer ID from the timesheet should be equal should be equal to that ID that is in the session. What else? Oh, and the departments agree. So the department in the timesheet agreed to the department code in the department table. Why? Because I want to show the department name. Okay. And what else? Oh, and the status code is not equal to C. What is C? Cashed, paid. So I want in here, I want all the timesheets that are pending, approved, disapproved. What else? Submitted except cash. I don't care about the ones that have been paid. Those go in a different page. These are the paid ones. And guess what? They're shown in a different way. Okay? So I'm just interested in the ones that are not paid. So this query it's going to give me all the information that I need to show in here. So to test it, I'm going to copy it. I'm going to go to my query browser, paste it, and I'm going to, instead of put dollar sign ID, I'm going to put 123-45-6789. And I'm going to run it. They didn't run. I wonder why. What's employee ID? All right. I should say, what is dollar sign ID? Ah, you get it now. It's the primary key. So, Mike Dover's primary key is one. So, it didn't make sense to put one, two, three, dash, four, five, whatever, whatever, whatever. It's actually one. And I got rid of the quotes. Wait a minute. Do I have quotes in there? Yes, I do. What's employee ID in the timesheet? This is in what? This is in the timesheet, right? Employee ID. It's in 10. This might not even work. Hold on. I'm going to try with the quotes. Execute. I'm going to try without the quotes. Execute. It worked both ways. Okay, so you can have you I know it will not work with a with a with a string. You have to put the strings in single quotes. Okay? So the numerical values you can put it with between quotes or no quotes whatsoever. At any rate, how many records did I get back? Two, four, six, eight. I have eight timesheets from this guy. These are it. Four, thirty-nine, forty, etc., etc. Look at this from 2010, 2012. They're in, in different. They're in different order. Okay? What if I want it in a certain order? Order by that. 
oh, that's ascending. I want descending. That's much better. That's what I want. Okay? And that's what I'm going to put in my query. Got it? And then what am I going to do? I'm going to say, okay, database connection, query, execute the query. Get back, dollar sign $R. We already know that it's going to be the results, right? Because it's a select. What if it doesn't come back with results? What are you going to do? Trigger an error. Trigger an error. And this is another way of catching a MySQL error. Used to trigger a user error condition. It can be used in conjunction with the built-in error handler, which is what we were doing before. Okay? Or with a user-defined function that has been set as the new error handler. So the trigger error, you pass as a string the error message. And optionally, the error type. But in this case, we're not going to do the error type. We're just going to do the error message. What's the error message? There was a query, MySQL error, and you just append the MySQL error from the database connection. Okay? So something happened to the database. Usually, typically, at this level, something happened to the database. Okay? That doesn't mean that if you do not get results, then there's going to be a SQL error. Not necessarily. Your database could be fine, but your SQL query might not produce any timesheets at all. Okay? So, what do you do with that R now? Okay? This is the part that is really cool. Look at these guys. Let's analyze the timesheet list the HTML. Okay? Login, sign in. So let's take a look at the timesheet list. That is the plain HTML one. Okay? With Firebug. And in fact, I'll start from here. Let's start from here. What do you have? A div that shows the employee name. Right? Then you have a table in here that shows all the timesheets. Let's expand it a little bit. Oh, look at this. It has a table row with the title, the header, right? Peer ending, hours, all that stuff. And then one after another and you can verify this by expanding the HTML one after another these guys are just an exact copy of themselves right because what they have is a period in date number of hours department, status, and timesheet ID. And the next one might as well be identical. It's going to be the exact same information. The first one, the period ending date, is going to have an anchor. Okay? It's going to have an anchor. And that's going to be key. Why? Because when you provide the list of timesheets, you want to be able to provide a link to the actual timesheet through the period ending date. So when I see my whole list, I should be able to click on the period ending date and I should be taken to the specific timesheet information. This is just like a, like a review of the timesheet. Because it's part of the list, you don't want to get everything, right? 
but when you click on it, you should get everything. So what's going to be the link that you're going to provide? Well, the answer is depends. If the timesheet is pending or disapproved, that means the Mike Dover should be able to modify it. So the link that I'm going to provide is going to be Enter Hours. Remember, Enter Hours is the page where I can actually enter information for that timesheet. But what if it's approved? Or submitted? Mike Dover shouldn't be able to modify it. So let's take a look at the second example. The second example, indeed, the anchor is different. It's print hours, not enter hours. One more thing. When you provide a link to the timesheet, whether it's to be able to enter the hours or to print the timesheet, you have to tell me what timesheet I'm talking about. How do you do that? You provide that as a parameter. So the anchor becomes the name of the page, question mark, here comes the parameters. And the parameters, as you might well guess, is going to be name equals value, ampersand. Name equals value, ampersand. All the way, as many parameters as you need. And they're going to show up in the URL. So when you hold over this guy, you can see right there, localhost, timex, html, enter hours, that html, question mark, tid equals 39. You can see in the URL what's being passed. And that's fine. That's fine that we can do that. So in this case, the en the anchor to this timesheet, since it's pending, it's going to be enter hours, and the timesheet ID, that's the name of the parameter, TID, timesheet ID is going to be equal to 39, which is happens to be this timesheet, which is different from this timesheet. This timesheet is 20. And that's what you pass as a parameter in here, TID 20. And that was the primary key of the timesheet. Yes, correct. So at this point, you're going to be manipulating all your entities through their primary keys, whether it's employee, whether it's timesheet, whether it's department, whatever, through their keys. That's going to be essential. Okay? So other than that, the rest of the stuff is just the same. You know, a div class, style 25, a 48.00. The next one is going to be a div class, style 25, of accounting. Notice that I'm not showing department 1 or department 5, right? I'm showing department accounting, full name, not the key. When you want to present data, you don't want to present keys. You manipulate your entities through the keys, but you do not present keys. You present user-friendly information, accounting, information technology, customer support, whatever. Okay. Next, P. Actually, this should have been pending, approved, whatever, but, but I'm running out of space, so I had to just at a glance, put just the initials of pending, approve, etc. What else? 39, this is the ID, this is the actual timesheet ID, which is really not that much relevant to the user, but I'm presenting that as well. Okay? Build that. As you guys can see, by pulling up, I'm going to pull up timesheet list, the actual page, the HTML page, okay? And I'm going to put them side by side. So in here, on the left hand side, you see the HTML. On the right hand side, you see the PHP. Here it is. Here's my table. Here's the headers, period ending, hours, all that stuff. Here's my table. Okay. 
Nope, that's not my table. Here's my table. And then I put, you know, pure end in date, pure end in date. All this stuff is the same. Hours, hours. Department, department. And then I grab all these, all these other guys, all these TRs, which I know they are exactly the same, and I wipe them out. Gone. Goodbye. You're just going to leave one. Why? Because that one will get repeated in a for loop. Okay? That one will get repeated in a for loop. And that for loop comes from the results. So the first condition that you're going to ask is, let me see if there were any results coming back. So how do you do that? You say, my SQL, give me the number of rows. Very similar to the way that logging was. In the logging, when you got exactly one result, you know you found that user. Well, in this case, it should be greater than zero because it could be one, it could be a hundred timesheets. You don't know how many timesheets this user has. Okay? But as long as there's one, at least one, you're going to go inside here. Okay? What else? Then you're going to save the number of records. That number of rows, you're going to save it in number of records. You need to know. Why? Because you're going to do a for loop. So the for loop will take you from i equals 0. As long as i is less than the number of records, remember, in this case, i is 0 based. The number of records is not. That's why you say gr less than number of records. And then you increment your counter. What are you going to do? You're going to say, hey, fetch the array. And you know what that's going to do. It's going to grab the first record. It's going to grab the first record. This one, 40, P, whatever, whatever, whatever. And it's going to give you an array out of it. An array that says sub ID equals 40. Sub status code equals P. Sub period ending date, and you give you the date. Okay? It's in a MySQL association array. And you call that array T for all the timesheets. Okay? And then what do you do? You do echoes. Echoes of what? Echoes of each one of these TDs. The TR, that's an echo. This TD, that's an echo with the anchor. Okay? You do a TD of this T, uh, uh, an echo of this TD and another echo of this TD and then instead of these hard-coded values you're going to put the actual PHP code which is dollar sign $t that's our timesheet right? array sub period ending date dollar sign $t total dollar sign t department dollar sign t status code etc etc how come i have a dot operator that's a really good question actually i'm doing notice that the first string i'm not doing any dots why because i'm providing the whole string right there right and I'm grabbing this guy, and it's going to be replaced by the value. Correct? But these guys, these other guys, I'm doing a concatenation because they're exactly the same. The first part, notice this first part. Style 25. Style 25. Center. Style 25. That is going to be identical for each one of these. So I'm just going to copy the, this string, exactly the same, and then I'm going to dot whatever I have to append. And then I have to put the end of the TD. That's another append. Yeah, it would have worked if you wanted to. Yeah, it would have worked. But do but you notice the difference? And the way that it's being presented, 
in here since it's a concatenation are we in PHP code or are we in HTML in PHP code right therefore the concatenation will be of dollar $t that's the array and then the element that you want should be passed as what as a string right but in this case in this case you're not concatenating you're inside a string this guy is inside a string and in fact it's inside a double quote because if you put it inside a single quote it will actually print this for you dollar sign t period and there which is not a value but since it's in double quotes it's going to take this and replace it with its value so what I'm saying is in here there's a replacement in here there is not there's a concatenation you can do either or <coughs> you get it I'm just doing it different way so you guys have options you can do it with a replacement inside a double quote string or you can do it as a concatenation TRs and TDs these guys but instead of having hard-coded values they're gonna come from the ones that you read in the database now what happens if you do not get any records and I'm gonna make sure that he or she knows about it no timesheets were found for this employee so instead of this list, I'm not going to show a table at all. I'm going to show the message, no timesheets were found for this employee. Then you make sure you close your database right what else you're going to include the sign in sidebar you're going to include your footer I'm doing a close connection again I don't know why that's wrong I don't really need that because at this point I'm exiting and that's it yes that's a very good question Tim so the question is if instead of putting P you wanted to put pending the word or instead of A approved the word what you could do is in the status code instead of just putting the status code you can do an if statement right there an if statement that says if dollar sign T status code equals P echo I, I, yeah, a pen. Pending. Otherwise, if it's equal to whatever, the thing is, at this point, it's so long that if statement that it will mi make more sense to create a function for it. Okay? It will make more sense to create a function, which takes me to the part about functions. Notice that in this case, in the configuration, not only I have defined constants, I have also defined a function. And this is this is what you can do when you have a function that you're going to be using all across the different pages. It's a global function, some kind of utilitarian uh, function that does something. In this case, the my error handler and we're going to see how that's being handled okay in case of errors my error handle is going to be a global function that it can be called from any page so instead of having a whole bunch of ifs in here it will make more sense to create a function and you pass the status code as a parameter and then what are you going to do you return back just a string and that string is made out of whatever pending approved depending on the value that is being passed 
Okay. So now you're being presented with this list of timesheets relevant only to Mike Dover, nobody else's. How did you guarantee that? Because the query that you built against the database makes sure that it grabs only the data from that employee. And that's how you're going to be able to guarantee that only the rightful owner of the information will get that information. First of all, that it's logged in. How do you check that? The session. The session must have information of somebody has been logged in and who is he or she. So you grab that ID from the session and you use it to do all the queries that you need. Give me the timesheets. Okay, who are you? Oh, I know who you are. I'm going to build the query based on who you are and get those results only from you or only for you and then you present it. The presentation at this point, if you guys have done a good job with your HTML static pages, at this point all you have to do is grab one of them and put it in the PHP version. And the, all the rest of the stuff just falls through. So, Let's test it. I'm going to test it. This is signing the true signing PHP. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One, two, three, four, five. Sign in. These are Mike Dover's. See this timesheet list, PHP? These are Mike Dover's timesheets. Two, four, six, eight. The same ones that we got in here. A million timesheets. Yes, it would show all of them. Yes, that's a very good question, Stefan. What if you only want to display 10 per page, and not the million timesheets? You can handle that one of two ways. You can handle it on the server, or you can handle it on the client. How do you want to handle it? On the server. What's the first option? In here, remember, you're building the query. Yes! Top 10 or first 100, I'm sorry, then that's how you handle it on the client side. On the client side, instead of building a table, you're going to have a widget in here. It's called a table widget, and jQuery has a, a really good example of it's a JavaScript widget that will present data in a table and you can tell it how many at a given point in time. You say, give me 15. And if it's more than 15, it will provide the navigational for you, the navigational links, to go to the next 15, and the next 15, and the next 15, all the way to the end, previous 15, previous 15, all the way to the beginning. Yes, a jQuery. jQuery has that. And in fact, it's so cool that it will also provide the capability, given one table, the capability of show that data sorted by department, sorted by date, sorted by number of hours, sorted by status. And you all you have to do is click on the title of the column, and it will sort it by that. That's pretty cool. But that's done on the client side. So if you have one million timesheets in the, in the server, you're going to stream down to the browser a million timesheets. So you, typically it's a combination of both. you got to limit it on the server and you got to limit it on the client. Okay? Very good question. Okay. 
So last but not least, how do I sign out? Because if you log in, you've got to be able to sign out. Okay? So in here, in timesheet list, I have created... Where am I? Oh, here it is. On timesheet list, I have created an anchor called sign out. Okay? It's right here. Which I usually provide in every page. And where does it go? It goes to logout.php. So you also, as part of logging, you have to also do logout. Which, by the way, this is what's due, not this Sunday, but the following Sunday. I need you guys to implement login and logout. And the equivalent to timesheet list. Whatever your main entity is, give me the list. Okay? And I should only be able to see my my list not everybody else's whether it's comments whether it's I don't know depends on what your main entity is so let's take a look at how logout is being implemented logout literally is so simple that you guys are not going to believe how simple it is first of all what do you think logout should do just to erase the session once you erase the session, the web server doesn't know you from anybody else. And then, where should I be redirected to? Homepage? Login? Yeah. Should I be redirected to timesheet list? No, because at that point you're now logged down. So, you have no business going to timesheet list. So what is logout? Ladies and gentlemen, this is logout, the complicated logout. You do the same thing as session start, right? What is session start? Hey server, is there a session for this guy? If it is, pull it up. So now you have dollar sign session fill out. If there isn't, session will be empty. No problem. It will be a new one. Then what do you say? Session destroy. Session destroy. This is, I mean, this is <laughs> the cool thing about um, PHP is that there's probably a PHP function for absolutely everything that you're going to need. Really. Destroys all the data associated with the current session. Everything. So if you had dollar session fill out with whatever was there, which at this point you do, if you stop right there, you will see that Mike Dover is logged in. Okay? Then you tell it, hey, destroy it. And then what do you do? You just build up a signing URL. You clean the buffer and you take me there. Exit. Where am I you taking me to? Sign in. So here it is. Hold on. Sign up. I'm back to login. What happens if I try Ah, because I saved the URL. What happens if I try timesheet list? No matter how many times I try it, I know it was there. I'm going to keep getting bounced to sign in. Because I'm not logged in. Previous. <coughs> All right. Finally, so you guys believe me, I'm going to sign in as somebody else. What do you want me to sign in as? Let's sign in as Ajay Kumar. Notice that I have put 
the exact same hash password everybody so I can log in with the same password for everybody okay you don't have to but I, that's what I'm going to do in order to sign in with your sample users okay actually I'm going to take this hash and put it in your database because I know this means one two three four five so I'm going to sign in as a J Kumar a J Kumar is that social security number so I put his social security number and I put one two three four five I sign in how many time sheets do I get two because those are the only timesheets that I have for a J. Kumar. This is where the content varies according to who is logged in. Some of this content will have links to pages that you have not created PHP code for yet. So these are approved. If I click on them it's going to take me to print hours but it's going to take me to print hours HTML I click this is not a J Kumar this is Mike Dover why because it's static I understand that that's fine with me what it's not fine is that I click here and I am taken to nowhere land that is not fine I want you to take me to your static page, whatever that is, that static page is, okay? But no, do not take me to nowhere's land, no, man, no man's land or whatever, okay? Later on, when you actually implement print hours in PHP, you're going to have to go back to timesheet list and modify that HTML to PHP because you are truly at that point you are truly implemented print timesheet and you have access to it so at this point I still have a functioning website from start to end and little by little I'm adding code and I will show truthful information coming from the database others there will still be static that's fine but it should still be smooth the way you navigate so for next week I want you guys to implement login which also implements logout and literally the logout you can actually copy my code and that's it this will be available on Moodle for you to download and play with login and logout in timesheet list with all the links working got it so, how do we...